Hello there, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to run an experiment. We're going to apply a torque wrench to the oil pump drive shaft of a stock one and an ARP one. And we're going to find out which, when is the yield strength, uh, what's the torque capacity of each one. Now, before I get into this, this end here is the distributor end. So, in a Cleveland, this end is dropped in underneath. So, when you put the oil pump on, this end goes down into the block, and this um, locating ring stops the drive, this drive shaft, from pulling out when you go and take the distributor out, either for retiming or for whatever re whatever means necessary that the distributor needs to come out. That locking ring there stops the this from pulling out of the oil pump and falling into the sump. Now, because it's got a cut, it's a cut ring, so that locator sits inside a groove, and it would be my prediction that that groove there is where the point would be the weakest point in the system. And so if there's any going to be any weakness found, it should be here. All right, we got our torque wrench setting it to 10 foot pounds. Foot pounds, pounds, feet. You get the idea, it's a torque wrench. So, The ARP test. Twenty foot pounds. <laughs> Very little deflection on that one. That's only twenty. Thirty. Thirty foot pounds. It's getting it's getting quite severe now. ARP thirty foot pounds. Yeah. Stock one, 40 foot pounds. ARP, 40. Stock fifty. Thirty. 
Oh, it's starting to feel like it's twisting. Still going back, but it's got some serious deflection. ARP 50. It's starting to move more, but not anywhere near as much. Sixty. It's doing quite well for real. Sixty foot pounds. Alright, this might just keep going, but we'll see how we go. Yep, it's starting to twist. Yep, that's it. It's not. It's twisting at sixty. I'll back it off to fifty-five, see what it does. See if I can get it to click at fifty-five. Otherwise what I've done is I've exceeded the yield strength of the rod and it's beginning to twist so what will happen then is it will just keep twisting until it breaks so let's we'll see if I can get it to clip at 55 sorry about the rain no can't get it to twist then either starting to seriously twist up down the bottom so what I think I've done is that when I went to 50, uh, when I went to 60, I've exceeded the yield strength down in here, and because I've twisted it, it's weakened it. So I'll go back to 50, see if I can get it. All right, 50. Yep. All right, 50. Fifty one. Nah. So fifty foot pounds is all it'll take. Over fifty foot pounds, and we're starting to bend. So after this, it'll just keep screwing, like it'll just keep turning around until it eventually uh, reaches its ultimate yield and it'll break. Still fifty foot pounds. Now I won't do it to this one, but I will go to 50. We'll see what this does. No, I wasn't. I've done 50, I need to go to 60. So, 60. Oh. Yep. So that can handle 60. So, much beefier, just having a look at it myself. We'll just check it because it did actually just look like it was on the lean, but no, it's still. Uh, no, it's still there. It's, it's still straight. But I still wouldn't be putting it much past that. Well, shock horror. Wrong again. But hey, that's why I'm performing this stuff because I'm merely I'm just wanting to learn. And sometimes the best way to learn is just create. A situation where you can apply a, apply a force or you basically perform an experiment and you find the results so stock versus ARP well let's have a look at the ARP first because it's a decent bit of kit they're actually not that dear too I think on summit racing they're only about 30 bucks US so where I live in New Zealand it was about $60 delivered so I don't actually think it's too bad and as we can see from the test the amount of deflection between the point that sits in the oil pump to the bottom of the distributor the amount of deflection that this turns 
was quite minimal compared to the stock one where when the load started to be applied it acted like a big spring and it started to twist with the eventually getting to when we exceeded 50 foot pounds and it started to basically get screwed as we can start to see it's starting to twist at the bottom down here pick it up completely there you go so it's starting to deform and it's starting to twist quite badly and and actually in a lot of ways I think how I had the oil pump which was a bit deeper than standard because there's the standard line there and that's where I was testing it so this twist would be further down but it does actually show that this pump doesn't the pump drive doesn't just shatter it twists and it'll eventually much like a a, a good quality steel will do is it will keep turning but not fatigue um, until it eventually shears so it's a good quality steel especially for the job that it's trying to do which is apply a, a twisting force down to the down to the oil pump now I was wrong in that thinking that this would be the point of weakness in fact far from it, it didn't have anything to do with that it had, there was no signs of um, problems in this area so um, the other thing that this has to do and we have to look at again if we look at the, the oil pump and the way the oil pump operates um, I'll just see if I can quickly no nah. hold on I'll just set this up okay so in one of my videos I did the basic operations of the pump now when we reached this location this was at its highest fill point but we also have to look at it from the application of the drive being applied by this down into the pump to turn this rotor we have to understand that at this point here there is very little load all right we have a small amount of cavity which is being squeezed through here which is not much and we also have this large amount uh, this cavity being grown so we have a force here that's trying to twist this back because this is a negative we'll call it a negative so like a vacuum that's being filled so it's a void so it's having to apply uh, the force that's being applied to the drive shaft is trying to pull it this way because it doesn't want to doesn't want to go that way but we also have a point here which again I suppose is it's trying to push back as well so as it tries to push back against this drive it locates and it forms these little lugs or as it wears the wear point sorry the wear point on the distributor at both ends so this here is effectively it doesn't want to turn this way it wants to all the forces are trying to push back so it's being driven this way by the by the drive shaft but at various points the force that's trying to push back um, changes so as we go through our rotation if I can get my finger in there if we go through the rotation we go to here the cavity opens up to go up into the engine and then it shrinks as it is forcing the oil up into there so the, the pressure or the force required to make that happen increases so the load against the drive shaft here is trying to do this to it it's trying to push it it's trying to resist the rotation so that rotate that rotational uh, force to uh, the rotational force that's being resisted is trying to twist the steel in the opposite direction but then when the oil pump reaches a certain point where that load falls off which is uh, somewhere here in the middle and there is little load because you have various load points as to where you have maximum force trying to push against it to reduce force so you wind up with effectively an oscillation in this so you have it loaded up and then released loaded up and released and that has a negative impact on the distributor because the distributor gear itself which is connected to the cam there is a lash between those two gears and if this is moving because it's oscillating against the pump all right so it's going 
under load, no load, under load, no load. So effectively it's a big giant spring, so it loads up the spring and then the energy is released. It then goes into the distributor and you wind up with spark scatter because the end of the uh, distributor, which is where your, um, ah, I should know these bloody terms off by heart, but distributor button, I'll call it. So that's the piece that goes out and touches where the spark comes on. That changes, but not only that, but also inside here where your hall effect, inside the distributor, where the hall effect is, it alters the position, so it is altering the timing of the system. And it doesn't matter if it's a points, it's a point system or um, hall effect. All of them have the same pickup point to say when the dis when the um, ignition fires. So this oscillation can be anywhere, maybe one, three, could even be up to five degrees up in the top end. So that's what's known as spark scatter. And as you can see, that uh, it doesn't take much effort. As I said, there's only ten foot pounds, and this thing started to turn quite badly. So. And at a point of cost, and a point, you have to remember too, is that if we apply 10 foot-pounds at 52.52, which means our horsepower is the same, so if this pump is requiring 10 horsepower to turn, then, then this is then absorbing 10 foot-pounds of force. And if you can remember one of the first tests I did, and just how much deflection there was, it was quite a bit, especially in the 3 to 5 range. Three to five it could have been in three to five degrees where compared to this which stayed much much stable so if there's a performance gain from using the ARP gear it's to try and reduce the uh, spark scatter that's induced by the effect effectively you call it the oscillation of the shaft by the pump where this one here just stays stiff so the as the forces come and go load up and then release this doesn't absorb it by twisting and then is released back into the system so that's um distributor that's the distributor drive so um yeah thanks very much for uh thanks for watching and something perhaps to consider um when um when installing when you're using a, a standard one versus going for an ARP one too. Oh, and one other thing too, because when I was doing some research on this as well, you also have to consider that, um, I don't know how, how I might have to do that, um, but uh, I suppose it could be my next one. I'll have to find a standard distributor and I'll have to lock the distributor and then see how much effort it will take um, because on a distributor, on the bottom of the distributor where the gear is, there is just a, it's, I'll call it a shear pin, but it's really, it's just a, it's a hollow piece of steel with a, um, with a slit in it. And it's, it shrinks up and allows it to go through the, the gear drive. Now, the force required to simply shear the two points off the side of the um, distributor gear is less than in what is required to do this. So... That might have to be the next exercise. I just need to find a standard distributor to try that too and wreck. But anyway, um, yeah, hopefully that's an uh, enjoyment. It's probably more of a statement for ARP. No, I'm not sponsored. I have to buy my own stuff. But um, yeah, there is a reason for it. Oh, cheers. Thanks for watching. See you next time.